You may be surprised to know that this 5,000 square foot custom home can be heated for less than $200 a year. How do they do it? They use an innovative construction technology called SIPs or structural insulated panels. With me is Frank Baker, president of Inselspan. Frank, SIPs may seem new, but they've actually been around for quite a while. That's right, Steve. The technology originally was developed in around 1934 at the Forest Products Lab in Madison, Wisconsin. And what do they use to make these out of? Well, at that time, they were using cardboard egg crate fillers. Uh, the advent of plastic foam insulations didn't come until the 50s. So they're quite different today. Yes, the cores today are made of modified expanded polystyrene, which is a rigid foam insulation that possesses great insulation values and structural properties. Let's talk about the anatomy of a SIPS. Uh, obviously, uh, this is oriented strand board? Right. The two skins are oriented strand board, which are bonded to the fo rigid foam core. And as a composite, they're much, much stronger than the individual components. Why is that? Well, the panel performs much like a beam does for the... Top and bottom skins are like the flange of an I-beam, and the web is the foam in between. So the stresses of, the, of tension and compression are taken by the skins. The cores transfer shear between those skins, which gives you, in the end result, a very, very stiff, strong composite action. What about building codes and SIPs? Sandwich panels have been in the basic building codes since the 60s. And during that time frame, as manufacturers have become more sophisticated, and have done a lot more testing to verify the performance of their panels. They've submitted them to the National Evaluation Service, which ultimately issues a code review report that ensures for the billing inspector that the review has already been done. So, Frank, how are these panels made? Well, we start with a large block of expanded polystyrene foam, and then that foam is cut into the thicknesses appropriate to the panel, and then that foam is loaded along with the OSB into an automated line which automatically puts down a precise layer of adhesive that's monitored, automatically loads the OSB, and then transferred into a press that uh, holds the assembly together during the curing process which takes a total time of about five minutes to produce an eight foot, eight by twenty four foot panel. So we never have to worry about uh, this deteriorating over time or the glue delaminating from the OSB? No, the material life is really indefinite. Uh, <clears throat> it'll easily outlast us and uh, quite a few generations down the road, too. Now, you have a unique way of cutting these. Right. We've automated our operation pretty significantly. We use computer-controlled cutting equipment that can cut the panels into the shapes and forms you can see here very, very efficiently and very precisely. We can cut building components now to machine tool tolerances. How do you fasten the wall panels to plates? Very much like you do with a stud frame. The panel itself simply slips over a sole plate nailed to the deck typically. Same identical sole plate that you would use in a stud frame. And then they are nailed through the flanges of the OSB into that plate and that gives you a connection then to the deck and onto the foundation. And where windows and walls intersect, you use a spline? Typically we'll use a spline at any place where there's a joint in the panel or it meets up with a corner uh, windows and doors, typically lumber is installed in the surround of the window through a relief that's provided in the panel. And very commonly, we'll provide those pre-installed in the panel so that we minimize the amount of site labor to keep cost in control and to speed up the building process, too. It's another one of the benefits of SIPs is that the time frame of closing a building in is reduced dramatically. You can use SIPs for other applications than walls, right? Right. Uh, roof systems are also another common application for SIPs especially where the interior volume of the house is going to be open into a cathedral ceiling or to the roof plane, which gives it the opportunity to use volume within the house that often goes lost. And so you don't have all those sticks you're trying to put together. It's fairly efficient. How much labor do you save? Well, the site labor, there's considerable savings in site labor because panels are made in very large sections, 8 foot by 24 feet, and then cut to suit a particular design like we see here. But we try to work in as large an increment as we can so that when you put up a panel, you're putting up a lot of square footage real quick. What about wiring? Electricity is usually run through the panels through wiring chases that are provided in the panel and pre-engineered and manufactured in the panels, or they're relatively simply cut into the panels on site. There's a lot of flexibility in the building system. And can you summarize the benefits of structural insulated panels? 
Well, there's quite a few benefits, some of them subtle and some of them more obvious. Obviously, energy efficiency is a big part of it, and that's what attracted me to panels and most people initially. They're extremely tight. There's no place for air leakage, which makes homes much more comfortable. There are no drafts in these buildings. And the <coughs> energy savings, as you mentioned, are phenomenal by comparison to any other standard used out there. But in addition to that, what's hard to comprehend sometimes is that they're also much stronger than stick framing. A panel wall system can be anywhere from five to ten times stronger than a stud framed wall system. Whether it's done in steel or wood, the panels still are much, much stronger. Then there are many other subtler benefits. The panels are very straight and true. They are flat, they don't move, they don't warp, they don't twist, which is a common problem with stick framing. With stick framing you also have problems with nail pops due to lumber drying and you don't have that problem with panels because the OSB is very stable, it doesn't expand and contract so your nails stay there. You also have a nail base everywhere on the interior face of the walls and roof which is not the case in a stick frame as you, everyone knows when you go to hang a picture somewhere trying to find that stud. I haven't found one yet by the way. But uh, with a panel, it's absolutely foolproof. It, you've got nail base everywhere. It makes hanging cabinets much easier. It makes trim work much more efficient because the walls are straight and true. You don't have to straighten them out in order to get a good fit up of trim or cabinets either. What percentage of the homes today are built with SIPs? A relatively small but steadily growing p percentage. Over the last 10 years, the SIPs industry has been growing at a rate of close to 30% a year, which is pretty hefty growth rate. Of course, we started from relatively a small base, relatively few panels being produced, but the impetus towards panels has grown significantly as energy issues have become more important, the advent of model energy codes, <clears throat> and also the shortage of skilled labor also is driving more and more interest to prefabricated factory uh, fabricated components to the building site. Frank, thanks for being here. Thank you, Steve.